Hi, and welcome to Hannah and Eric Go Birding. We're just a couple of bird brains looking for adventure and some birds. And this is our first episode, and we're so excited to share our birding adventures with you all, as well as some of our random thoughts on other birding-related topics. I did want to emphasize that we are by no means experts and are continually learning continually learning, and enjoying spending our time out in the field. So just a bit of background on us. We're from a, a suburb just outside of Portland, Oregon, and started birding about nine years ago, so we're pretty late to the game. After birding around Oregon a bit, we went abroad to the country of Texas for several, for several years living in the Rio Grande Valley, and then, we, then we, earlier this year we moved to Tallahassee, Florida, and have been adventuring around Florida since. We love to travel to go birding, whether it's around the country or around the world. So far, we've been fortunate enough to travel to Europe, Southeast Asia, the Caribbean, and are currently planning a trip to South America to bird. Of course, we aren't able to bird abroad all the time, bird abroad all the time so we also settled on traveling around the Southeast during the weekends. As Hannah said before, we're creating this podcast to share our birding adventures with you, discuss birding topics, and hopefully encourage others to go birding as well. We'll talk about some of our successes and many of our failures on our adventures and other random things. Our most recent birding adventure or birding failure so as not to bore everyone. So our most recent birding adventure took us to Cedar Key, Florida in search of a reddish egret. Of course, we've seen reddish egrets in the past, but Eric is a mega lister. He's trying to grow his list in each county and state and I'm pretty much and. I am pretty much along for the ride. I like to learn more about birds and just overall grow my life list. We were excited to visit this town. Um, we had listened to a lecture with the Panhandle Archaeological Society at Tallahassee um, who had discussed a Native American solstice gathering on those little offshore island gathering. Um, and the researcher that did the presentation had investigated a midden, which is essentially a historical garbage pile, and found tons of bones of juvenile white ibis there. So we thought we'd see a ton while we visited. Well, while we were in the town, it was pretty busy with fishermen and tourists, so it was difficult finding a spot to go. It was pretty busy with fishermen and tourists, so it was difficult finding a spot to go anywhere there. Traffic was pretty crazy. We ended up at a boat ramp, uh, boat ramp number four, bridge and fishing pier. There was an old couple having a pretty terrible argument when we first arrived. Um, thought we were going to have to break it up. Anyways, the the spot is best in the late fall and winter to be out there. <laughs> but it uh, uh, happened to be summer, and the reddish egret had been seen in the area recently. And so, so we had to go looking for it. Yeah, we arrived late in the day. It was about 11 o'clock. Uh, it was already freaking hot. And uh, the boat ramp had no shade and no cover, so we didn't stay that long. There was a little cover, but there was a family. We didn't stay that long. There was a little cover, but there was a family um, hanging out with a baby in a baby basket right yeah. there. <laughs> as, uh, as the fishermen uh, were giving us weird looks because we were standing there with binoculars, uh, we still saw a pretty good variety of birds, things you'd expect to see at a boat ramp, anhingas, egrets, herons, spoonbills. We also saw lots of uh, Hannah's favorites, uh, magnificent frigate birds. There uh, were so many of them. They're super, super high up. Uh, um, we'll definitely have to go back and kayak once uh, once it cools off a little. Well, anyways, after leaving the boat ramp, we decided to cool down a little bit and drive around town. Um, we were looking for another spot. There was one out by. Um, we were looking for another spot. There was one out by the bay, but there were so many fishermen. It was just incredibly crazy with fishermen. But there were a lot of brown pelicans hanging around too. Um, so we drove around the little town a little bit, which is adorable. And I can't wait to go back and bring our kayaks and bikes. And there's a little camping spot on fall to go do that. It actually kind of reminded me, um, with the little t restaurants and goofy towns. Yeah. It reminded me a lot of like the coastal towns in Oregon where we're from, except it was like 30 degrees, degrees hotter <laughs> with no wind and magnificent frigate birds overhead, which still really excites me. Um, so we checked eBird out, out and we found a hot spot that was kind of outside of town. It was called the Cedar Key Cemetery. Um, it's what you'd think it is. It's a cemetery, but there's a little boardwalk that leaves from there. Uh, this place was a little unusual as it had that boardwalk running around the brackish wetland that's just right next to the cemetery. And we walked and we walked out into the shadeless, oppressive sun. It was kind of odd, though. There were a bunch of... Um, people driving in and out of the cemetery the whole time we were there. We had no idea what was going on. We thought there was a bunch of funerals or something, but no, there was a fishing spot on the other side of it. Yeah, and they, they parked in the middle of the cemetery to walk down 
to a fishing spot on the opposite side of the cemetery from the entrance. It was it was kind of strange. And there were no paths too, which I... yeah, they like walk through the forest and down to the water. Fishermen, they'll they'll do what they want. Yeah, but uh, after like ten minutes of uh, walking on that boardwalk, uh, we saw a few of the typical species of herons and egrets. Uh, heard a clapper rail, lots of osprey flying overhead, some uh, vultures, and uh, some purple martins. And then uh, Hannah noticed an odd-looking vulture. It was flying in a slight dihedral. It was being harassed by purple martins. But we noticed that you could you could see a sizable head on it. So normally turkey vultures head because it's featherless, so it's pretty small. But this uh, was obviously not a vulture because um, it had you could see its head. So uh, we took a better closer look at it. The tail had barring on it. The wings had some barring on the um, on the coverts. So we both instantly started thinking zone-tailed hawk. Instantly started thinking zone-tailed hawk because being from Texas or living down in Texas for a bit, we saw lots of um, zone-tailed hawks down there. Okay, maybe not lots. Maybe not lots. Maybe a couple. But we were always on the lookout for zone-tailed hawks because there was an opportunity to see them down there. And so every single turkey vulture, Eric did the hawk watch a lot at oh, Benson yeah. State Park. And he was always looking at turkey vultures, hoping for the zone-tailed hawk, which I saw one or two down there, I think. Yeah. A couple of them. Yeah, so th- thinking of this this is a zone-tailed hawk, we, in a fit of excitement, we started running back and forth, you know, like on Sims, he hey, light a fire, he hey, light a fire, and they start <laughs> running back and forth like maniacs. And so we were trying to figure out how are we going to take pictures of this because we had left our camera at home. Which was the stupidest mistake we've ever made. Yeah, lesson, uh, lesson one for the day. Um, so we took out our phones, started trying to shoot uh, some terrible photos through our binoculars. I could not bin scope my phone up to my binoculars, and I could never get it into the, the right spot so I could take a picture. It was it was the worst. And I was I was just standing there sweating. I couldn't I couldn't get my phone to open because my fingers were so covered in sweat <laughs> trying to swipe the screen so I could take pictures. It was it was quite the um, Spe- quite the, um, quite the scene. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, spectacle for sure. Um, so we we got a ha- handful of pictures, all pretty terrible. Um, then we decided as soon as it, it flew up high enough, we couldn't see it anymore. So we got back in the car to cool off a little bit. And Eric annoyingly kept asking his phone number to raise the alarm and get people out there on the scene of the sighting because we just moved to Florida a couple months ago, so we don't really know a whole ton of people here, and we don't know who to alert. Also, we didn't have any cell phone service at the time, or barely any cell phone service. I was lucky that I could open up eBird to see um, sightings of eBird to see um, sightings in the area, so it was it was tough. Yeah, but while we were out there, we noticed, uh, or we realized that the Zone Tail Hawk would have been a state first record, so... So we were pretty excited. We've always wanted to be, um, you know, semi-famous from the yeah. scene of, of state first. We've we've been on the state first that people have seen, but we've never been the first ones to cite it, so we were hoping we could. But I didn't have any phone numbers of anybody living in Florida, um, so we had to settle with some phone fix- pictures and a story to corroborate the sighting. I was able to get a hold of a couple of folks on Instagram, Instagram, but I didn't have enough service to be able to send them pictures. <laughs> yeah, so one, once we got home, we kind of uh, reviewed the pictures on our phones, um, searched the internet a little bit, um, posted, uh, posted the pictures to the Florida Ornithological Society's uh, Facebook page. And then within about 10 minutes, somebody asked a simple question of what made you rule out dark morph short-tailed hawk i opened up a field guide app and then the entire bubble <laughs> bubble burst it uh it definitely wasn't his own tail it was a dark morph short-tailed hawk so honestly, we were pretty sure we had something different. Right? We suspected it was a zone-tailed hawk because that's something we more familiar with. Like we said, living in the Rio Grande Valley, but obviously we were super wrong and a tad bit embarrassed. So Eric, what are a few good tips to differentiating between zone-tailed hawks and a dark morph short-tailed hawk? Well, like really, location, location. The zone-tailed hawk's never been seen in Texas, while a short-tailed hawk... We're in Florida. We are in Florida now, aren't we? (laughs) Yeah. Zone-tail's never been seen in Florida, but uh, short-tail is in that area. It's been posted, though it hasn't been posted recently. So that was uh, kind of a 
Mm. Kind of a... Mm. Not sure how to say Punch it. in the gut? I guess so. Yeah, yeah. sort of. But um, the zone tail has more pronounced uh, barring on the tail, and um, zone tail is also grayer overall, though we couldn't really tell the color being that it was flying so high anyways. I thought it was pretty brown. I noticed I noticed it was pretty brown. I think from this misadventure, um, it really reinforced a lesson that we already know. It's a horse. It's not a zebra. Stop looking at the bird and thinking it's something incredibly rare unless we've done all the research and we know. So even though short-tailed hawk came up as rare on eBird um, and the most recent sighting was April before ours, it's st- sighting was April before ours, it's still, you know, it's still a really good bird to see and that's what everybody keeps telling us is that we shouldn't be embarrassed uh, because it was still a really good sighting. And this also um, plays in my favorite adage, which is that the difference between beginner birders and more advanced birders, it's the, the more advanced birders have made more mistake to tally up and we're making our way into becoming more advanced birders. Yeah. And so um, lastly, we'd like to end this episode by announcing that uh, for Woo! the second year, second year in a row, we won, we won the Great Texas Birding Classic Human Powered category with our friend Colin. We biked 15 miles around Galveston Island in Texas uh, look um, for nine hours looking for birds in April. <laughs> and we recently received news that we won. We were also excited that for the, thir- that for the third year, Shelley's Make Me Smile Award for our team name, Plover. It's the police. <laughs> what constitutes the Human Power Tournament? So the Human Power Tournament is um, you have a 24-hour period, basically sun up, sun down to look for as many birds as you can, and you can't use any gas-powered equipment. So bikes, walking, skateboard, what, whatever you can think of to... Kayaks. Think of to... Kayaks. Kayaks. Whatever you think, think of, just human-powered. And you, as soon as you get in a vehicle, your count can, can't go any further. You stop there. That'd be kind of fun to do a triathlon birding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should try that next year. Maybe. So, um, so what was our route that we took? So we started at Galveston in the morning. Yeah, short. It was shortly after sunrise, or right at sunrise. Um, we rode uh, rode around there for a couple hours. Uh, saw quite a few birds. Then we uh, rode up like three or four miles up the road to uh, Lafitte's Cove, which is a crazy little place. It's in the middle of a really nice subdivision. Yeah, it's a small like nice subdivision. Yeah, it's a small like quarter acre park in the middle of a little neighborhood that's being uh, I think Nature Conservancy. Owns maybe the property. I don't know. I think I, I'm it's not, owned by the the neighborhood. Maybe it's yes, yeah, right on the neighborhood. But um, so we we got that's a really good spot for migrating warblers. We got a few warblers that while we were there, to uh, Sportsman Sportsman Road, I believe is the name of it, or Seven Mile Road, something like that. Yeah, yeah. just a bunch of random roads that goes out to up here. Yeah, saw um, saw a couple shorebirds out there, some turnstones, and then uh, then we headed up into into Galveston itself, the town. And I think we just ended up at Moody Gardens from there, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, we ended at Moody Gardens, saw a blue-winged warbler right there at the end, right? Yeah, and we yeah. saw, around back, we saw our one black skimmer, which is just weird. It was just one by itself. And, and a f- flyover magnificent frigate bird. Just the one. It was crazy. It was yeah. like the perfect moment to have that magnificent frigate bird fly over. Fly over. Um, so in 2017 was our first year we competed and we won with 110 birds and our team name won also with Pishing in the Wind. Um, it was a pretty crazy weekend. We flew in from Atlanta. We drove from Tallahassee up to Atlanta. We flew into Houston on Friday, competed with the, did with the, on the tournament or in the tournament on Saturday with a few barred bikes and then took off to Atlanta to get back to Tallahassee on Sunday. So definitely a quick weekend. Um, the, so in 2017, we won with 110 birds this year, the, we got 120 birds, which was pretty amazing. Um, anyways, we hope to compete in 2019 in the great Texas birding classic. Uh, hopefully there'll be more teams competing next year. Uh, last year we only had one competitor. Uh, this year again, we only had one competitor. Two, so. Three teams signed up, but only yeah. two teams competed. Yeah. But one, one team didn't compete twice, two years in a row. They signed up, but didn't, didn't compete. It's kind of uh, kind of disappointing to not have more teams to compete against. <laughs> we need to beat more people. 
<laughs> so thank you guys for listening to our podcast. We hope you enjoyed it and or learned something. Uh, if you'd like to connect with us, please follow us on Hannah Goes Birding on Instagram or comment on our podcast. Let us know what you hated, hated and what you liked, what um, you'd like us to talk about, what you'd like us to stop talking about. Uh, but we're so glad you'd spend this few minutes with us learning about our adventures in birding. So check the show notes and we'll include some of the information that we talked about here, like our eBird checklist from the Great Texas Birding Classic from our Cedar Key adventure from the other day, as well as we'll post a couple pictures on there from um, our sightings that we had and our certificates from the classic. So check out the show notes. Thank you so much.